<clears throat> Welcome to weld.com. We've had a lot of people comment. We did an oxyacetylene welding and I put some stuff out about oxyacetylene welding and people seem to really enjoy it and they like the looks of it and everything. I just want to show you how simple it is and how fun it is. I want to do part of this with <clears throat> uh, no filler wire. I just want to float this weld pool. And then the last part of it, a lot of people have asked, well, what are you using for filler wire if you use one? And we use RG65. It's just a plain oxyacetylene uh, filler wire. This is 1 16th. You know, we joke around about doing stuff with baling wire and coat hangers and all kinds of stuff. I don't have a good wire coat hanger. I haven't seen one in years. But I guarantee you, we used to do a lot of stuff with just coat hangers, anything, clean them up a little bit. Baling wire is kind of fun. It's soft and pliable. So, let me, uh, let me get my gloves and my, my shield on here and we'll tack these up and have some fun. Be right back. Welcome back. Um, I have bead blasted. This is 3 16 material and you know, it's pretty rusty, crusty stuff, but it's okay. I'm pretty sure we did the last demo on the same type of material. I went ahead and bead blasted them. Uh, I should probably take care of that with a sander, but it's been sheared, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it alone. Easily clean these up with a grinder. Do not wanna be welding on rust. This is kinda like TIG welding. You really wanna clean things up. I wanna set these up with maybe just a whisper of gap, so I'm probably gonna light my torch and put a little dot right here on the corner and set these up over here where I can create this corner joint so you can see. Uh, I've got my filler wire. This is kind of fun. I guessed at that. What did I miss by eighth of an inch? All good things. I'm using a number two tip today. I have my pressure set at three. Acetylene. Five on the oxygen. Again, just for review, three types of flames associated with oxyacetylene. Carburizing, neutral, oxidizing. We like neutral flames around here for most everything we do. I have this sitting right on the table, so that means I'm going to get the table nice and hot and I'll, then I'll forget about it and stick my hand on it or something. I'm going to lean things up on the fire brick here in just a second. I'm going to get that preheat cone right down to within about a sixteenth or so away from the material. and just put a dot on there. That way when I set these up, I should be able to make this just wash over just a little bit. And the liquid weld pool will jump across. And if that doesn't happen, I'm gonna go to plan B and lean the part up that I have in my non-torch hand. You notice how I didn't how I didn't jump when the heater came on. I'm gonna go to plan B. Lean this up on the brick, and I am going to add some filler wire.
I'm gonna go clean this, I'll be right back. I wanna start out and see if I can't make this go. Uh, I may need to go to a bigger tip yet, but I wanna see if I can make this go without filler wire first. So I'm going to reheat my tack. This material is not, I'm looking inside the molten part on the edges and I've got a little bit of scum floating on here. So for the most part, it's doing what it's supposed to do. But this material was not the best to start with. We wanted to keep it real and grab some stuff that we would probably have laying around our shop. It's moving, it's just a little sluggish is all. I'm gonna go up a, another inch and a half or so. And I am just moving this back and forth enough to heat the edge up, make it kind of melt and fall back into the weld pool. The weld is actually coming out a little flat and that's okay. But we're teaching ourselves here to manipulate the very end of this torch real close to TIG welding just using a different heat source you can think of the end of this flame as being the tip of your tungsten for the most part we're heating up a, a larger area obviously than we would be with gas tungsten arc welding And I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> I want to turn the part over and start from the bottom and come up with filler wire and then we'll compare the two. I really don't think I want to grab a hold of that. I thought I had a pair of pliers over here. 
I'll bet that camera girl ran off with them somewhere. Okay, we're going to start out and do the same thing, but I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can't get this to go a little quicker. I don't expect things to clear out as far as the, I don't know, you call it pond scum or whatever was floating in there. Uh, but it should be a little rounder in the weld area. Since I'm adding filler wire, I do want to go with a little stronger flame and just barely get that settling whisper on the end of it. We're out here freehand for sure. Hopefully we don't have any big pops. I'm thinking we will though, judging from this sparkle show that's starting to come up. So we progressed up the weld a little quicker by adding filler wire and I had a stronger flame. Man, if you want to stay warm on a cold winter day, do some gas welding. That's not bad. Um, super saturated with heat. Let me go cool this off and I'll, uh, I'll run a bead, a wire wheel on it real quick and we'll compare. Be right back. I went and cooled this off and I, I walked over to the pedestal grinder that has the big wire wheel on it very lightly very lightly buff this off um i thought this was you know I, got, I was flat down here and i really started getting the hang of it as things started progressing up here i like this up here because it's nice and round and since we were adding filler wire that's what we should get this stayed pretty flat but a uh, real nice ripple pattern in it again when you're not having a filler wire in your hand you could you know, you can kind of stay real steady when you're out here in space. Uh, I was moving a little bit, but you know, to put stuff together, uh, I used to build a lot of stuff. When I first started welding, this is what I was introduced to. I teach it here at the college uh, the same time as gas tungsten arc welding because it's the same hand-eye coordination and torch manipulation. And uh, we built some cool stuff with it. Thin wall tubing, some Oh, I'd say up to like eighth inch. I remember building duck blinds for some of the school administrators, avid duck hunters, and we built some kind of, created some projects and put it all together with oxyacetylene. It was kind of fun. I think I've mentioned in the past, I've repaired artwork around town here that was put together back in the 40s or 50s and it rusted out. It's supposed to be rusted, but it didn't last forever and I actually sat down here in the shop and repaired it all with oxyacetylene. So, you know, what can you put together with it? Well, you can put together some pretty big stuff. 
Uh, people still use oxyacetylene for, I want to say, bit tipping, uh, building things up, putting carbide on things for wear resistant. Still useful. Yeah, it's a little slow, but still I think it's fun. It's old school and I'm all about the old school stuff. So uh, I hope this helped. If it was educational. If you have questions about anything, anything I can help with, please contact us. Thanks for watching Weld.com. Bob Moffitt with Cali College. Action. Hello. <laughs> well, I'm trying to do like Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello.